Hey friends, welcome to or welcome back to my series on the Canon R7. Today's video, I'm gonna cover a couple of things. I'm gonna to touch a little bit on the battery life. I'm also gonna be taking a look at the overheat times of the camera and just let you guys know right off the bat, every single mode that I've tested overheated. And then I'm also going to give you some bad news about the HDMI or the micro HDMI port on my Canon R7. So let's go ahead and jump into today's video. All right, so first up, the battery life. When I was doing my testing on the overheating times, I got about two hours and 15 minutes of video use on the camera. And then I've also taken it out a couple of times birding, three hours, four hours, five hours, and I've taken somewhere around 400 to about 550 photos. And during that time, I always had my my settings set to viewfinder shutting off at the minimum, the screen shutting off at the minimum, the um, auto power off at the minimum. So I've basically shut everything off on the camera. Typically when I do my burning, I'm walking around or just sitting in one spot. So I don't really have the camera on the ready. I don't need it on the ready. So when I see something, I just pull the camera up, I hit the shutter button or I hit a button and then it comes alive and then I can take a picture. So in this entire time that I've been doing this, a couple of days, I've had the camera for about two and a half weeks now, I've never run out of battery. In fact, I've never even actually pushed it past half a battery life. So I don't think the battery life taking photos is gonna be an issue. So with the battery stuff out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the overheat times. I tested the camera in three different modes. I tested the 4K fine. That's the one that you're oversampled 7K down to 4K. That's the one that's gonna probably produce the most heat. I shot in 30 frames per second. Then I changed it to the standard 4K shot in 60 frames per second. And then I went ahead and tested the 4K crop mode in 60 frames per second. Now, I've gotta tell you right up front, my times are all over the board. There's a couple of people on YouTube that have done heat tests. I encourage you to go and search for that because their times are drastically different than mine. Here is my setup and it's not scientific in any way. I tested all of my stuff in my studio. I'm in Phoenix, Arizona. My studio probably runs around 85 degrees even with the air conditioner on. I took it outside once and it shot in 112 degree weather. And then I also paused it for five minutes in between some of my shoot times. So th this is kind of a, this is kind of good news, bad news situation. The good news is the recovery times are amazing. As quick as I can change out a memory card or as quick as I can change out a battery or just shutting it off for five minutes, you're pretty much gonna get almost the same amount of shoot time that you did originally. And I'm gonna put a graphic up here so you guys can see this. I shot 4K fine, 30 frames per second for an hour and 20 minutes. And then I also did one for 52 minutes and 45 seconds. And then in my last trial, I shot 39 minutes and 36 seconds. On the trial, when I did 39 minutes, I gave it a five minute wait time. And then as soon as I got everything all set up, after the five minutes was up, I ended up getting another 32 minutes and 23 seconds on that, just with the five minute wait time. And I have definitely noticed that heat setting that's on there, that, that heat indicator as it increases. If you shut the camera off and wait two, three seconds and turn it back on, it drops two, three, four bars, and then you end up getting some extra uh, record times. So even though this does have an unlimited recording, you are limited to the overheating. Moving from the 4K fine 30 frames per second, let's go ahead and drop it down to the 4K standard mode in 60 frames per second. On this one, I ended up getting one hour and seven minutes. I didn't bother doing the five minute wait time and then trying again. That just seems like it's, it's relatively easy. If you need more than an hour of continuous shooting or an hour and seven minutes continuous shooting, this is probably not the camera for you anyway. That's my personal opinion. And then the last mode that I tested was the 4K crop mode in 60 frames per second. And then I ended up getting 49 minutes and 20 seconds of continuous shooting. And the 4 4K crop 60 frames per second is kind of interesting. I forgot to clear my memory cards. And when the memory cards filled up, I got a message saying that it could no longer record. And as quick as I could erase the memory card and then start the recording again, it had already dropped four bars on that progress overheat bar. So I don't think that the recovery times on this camera are gonna be that bad. So that's the good news. And if you're not shooting continuously, if you're recording and then starting and stopping and starting and stopping, I don't think you're gonna run into overheating issues at all. And then last but not least, taking this camera outside. I was at my birding location. It was 112 degrees outside. The camera was in the shade. I was in the shade. I was sweating like crazy. And I ended up getting 34 minutes and six seconds out of the camera. I waited five minutes. And then after that five minute wait 
time, I ended up getting an additional 21 minutes and 34 seconds. So as you can see, all across the board, there's really no rhyme or reason to the test times that I'm getting. Now, again, I have to reiterate, reiterate this. This is probably the fourth time I've said this. Your times are going to vary. This is very specific to me, to my studio, to my location, and to my temperatures. Yours will vary. So just use mine as a stepping stone. Take a look at other YouTubers and see what they've done and what their times are. If you do have this camera and you've done some heat tests, post some comments down below and let other people know what your times are as well. And then with that, let's go ahead and move on to the micro HDMI cable. Now, while I was doing all of my heat testing, I had my Ninja 5 or the Ninja V hooked up with this with the, the Atomos Ninja cord. I shot my first couple heat tests and I never unhooked the cables. I never did anything and the Atomos recorded no problem at all. I recorded internally on the camera while I was recording what the screen was showing on the Atomos. Then a couple of days later, I turned the camera back on, nothing was unhooked and I started to record another heat test and this is what happened. I started to get screen flickering and I'm taking a look at it and it's starting and stopping, starting and stopping. And then that little kangaroo yellow triangle symbol popped up. So I went ahead and clicked on that and the warning sign showed up on the Ninja saying that, saying that it stopped recording, it started recording, check the connection, make sure that you have a 2.0 HDMI cable and all that's in order. So. So what I'm gonna to have to do here is take a break from the series. I have to send this back to Canon, get that replaced because the next couple of videos that I'm going to be shooting are all about autofocus and I need the screen being able to be recorded on the Ninja 5. So there's probably gonna be a delay in my next video, probably two weeks. I have the Canon Care Package, so they do a pretty good job. The Canon R5, the micro HDMI port on that camera, already broke. So I ended up sending that back and I believe it took about five days to get it done repaired and then sent back to me. I'm guessing the Canon R7 is going to be the same way. So as soon as I contact Canon and get all that stuff all taken care of, I'll go ahead and send it back. Hopefully they'll repair it quickly and then I'll get it back and I'll get back onto the series. And if you guys are running into any other issues with the Canon R7, if you already have it and you're starting to notice some of these little uh, intricacies, maybe not something that's breaking, but something that is just not right, go ahead and post some comments down below. If you're not a subscriber to this channel and you're interested in this kind of stuff, why don't you go ahead and subscribe to the channel? And then make sure you turn on that bell notification because with this two week gap or however long it takes for Canon to repair this and get it back to me, when I do go live with my next video, if you have that bell notification uh, turned on, when I do go live with the video, you'll be notified. If you like this kind of information, give me a thumbs up on the video, share it with somebody. If you know somebody that's in the camera world that would be interested, that's where I'm gonna leave it. We'll see you guys next time, bye.